Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. It's been another week, man they fly by, and I've got a lot to do, a lot's changed. We're gonna run the shaper, we're gonna run the mill, or the lathe, we're gonna talk about some viewer mail that I got sent in, we're gonna do some modifications, and we're gonna talk. So let's go over to the bench and get started. All right guys, now, this is going to be a little long-winded, so um, I apologize up front. Plus, we got some rain on the roof. Uh, it's uh, Saturday morning for me, so uh, you know, and it's raining. So, but you got to do things when you have time to do them, and I have time. So let's get started. First, I want to cover these tool holders. Now, Abom seventy nine Adam Booth. Most of you guys are probably very familiar with him. Sent me these nice tool holders. He had watched my series of videos where I go from a four-way tool post on the lathe to a quick change, and he noticed that uh, some of the tool holders that he had got sent to him by a viewer looked exactly like the ones that, you know, I had got gifted to me by a viewer. And they were just sitting on a shelf. He wasn't using them, so he decided to send them my way. Now, I only had three originally, and uh, he gave me five, six, one bar, boring bar holder, uh, four uh, regular tool holders, and then a nice uh, Morse, pa Morse taper number two holder. And I put this drill chuck in it. And man, this thing's nice. We'll go over to the lathe in just a minute, and then, uh, and we'll use this, and I'll show you the benefits of it. I had never used one up until this point, and uh, I tell you, uh, if I would have known, I would have bought one sooner. So we need to make new nuts for the tops of these because they don't fit my tool post properly, at least the adjustment part. The actual holder fits fine, but I can't adjust the tool height with the original uh, nuts that uh, were on these, so we got to make some of those. And we'll do some knurling and try to redeem ourselves from uh, the big uh, tap wrench fail uh, that, uh, that I did a while back. Uh, it really turned out pretty well, to be honest. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, in fact, I'm really happy with it. I'm, I'm perfectly fine. The handle that I made fits really good. The only problem is that uh, my knurl is not the best in the world. Let me show you up close because I don't think that I really did. You can see I've got a decent pattern there. You know, it doesn't quite match the uh, existing pattern. But uh, all in all, I think it turned out pretty good. Um, you know, I didn't want to go out and buy a piece of material for this because it just wasn't necessary. Mm, excuse me. I just chugged a full cup of coffee in like 30 seconds. Um, a new piece of material wouldn't have fit in anyway. It would have just stuck out like a sore thumb. So I'm pretty happy with the repair that I've done, even though I did, uh, you know, make some mistakes in the early. And uh, Phil from Phil's Projects uh, commented in that video, and he made a lot of sense to me. Uh, he explained knurling in a language that I understand pretty well. And uh, I really want to thank him for that. Uh, thanks, Phil. I, I appreciate it. Another one of my viewers, Craig, Craig Clement. This is his YouTube channel, C-L-E-M-W-Y-O. He is a fellow Hindi owner, Hindi, my big lady. And he sent me some insert tooling. And... Uh, it's really nice, man. These are really good quality uh, holders, and I really appreciate that. There's only one issue with them, and that they're the center height or the cutter height is just a slightly tall. I can get them down on center with my current setup, but I want to be able to adjust slightly below center if I choose. So we're going to take those over to the shaper, and we're going to nibble away at the bottom of them. We're just going to remove a little material to give us a little more adjustment. So that's another job we're going to do. We're going to make some more nuts. We're going to nibble away at the bottom of these. And I'm going to show you the cool stuff that I got. Uh, one more person, Stan, over at Bar Z Industrial. Uh, go check Stan's channel out. Uh, most of you guys will be very familiar with him, with him. He puts on the Bar Z Summer Bash every year. And he sent me some of his uh, Witch Brew Center Lube, which is a mixture of... Uh, 50% white lead and um, I, for, I forget the other uh, concoction, but uh, supposedly this stuff's real good, so we'll have to try this out in the future. Uh, I tried it on crackers. It is delicious. Uh, the lead really adds that uh, zip that I crave. Uh, 
Stan sent me some 2017 uh, Barzy Bash swag, an American Rotary uh, uh, lanyard, and some American Rotary stickers along with his sticker. And he also sent me a couple little bottles of uh, Anchor Lube, and we'll try that out too. Um, so I'm really happy about that. So, enough Gavin. Let's go over to the lathe. We will get set up and get started. Well, here is our tool post that we changed recently. We went from a four-way to a quick change. Here is one of my holders that I got with the <clears throat> quick change. And when it slides on, it registers the nut here on our stop really well. It gives us plenty of room. We can turn, come in here and adjust this, and it's smooth and easy. Now, here is one of the original tool holders that uh, Adam sent, and it fits on here, but almost slides completely past, and our handle runs into the nut. We can get it to sit on there, but it it's really rough because it's just rubbing on the very edge. Hard to adjust and not acceptable really. I'm going to have to to make uh, some new ones. Here's the material that I'm going to be using and this is just some old hydraulic shaft that I have turned the chrome plating off of. Pretty good material to to use for something like this. Um, it leaves a pretty good, I mean it threads fairly well or taps fairly well and it's not too hard to get a decent finish on. So, put this in here. Crank it down. I'm going to be grinding the vice jaws of this uh, this vice soon. And uh, and I think that'll make a good, uh, good video for everybody if they're interested. Now, I've done it once before probably three years ago, but it's time to do it again. This old chuck's got a lot of wear in it, and uh, the jaws wear mostly out front where you, uh, you know, do most of your work holding. So I'm going to be grinding these, and uh, and we're going to try to improve our run out. I'm going to bring you in close. I'm going to show you the run out that we got, um, you know, unground or three years later, and... Uh, That'll give us a good starting point. All right, let's just loosen this up. And then I'm going to come in here and kind of give it a little spin. And these vice jaws are clean. A little spin as I tighten it. And then this has three uh, tightening positions. So we're just going to hit all those to try to center the scroll. At least give it the best opportunity that it has to be true and relatively tight. Now this chuck has done a lot of work and it's a lot older than me so it's been a good one and it's even been good for me. Hopefully we can see this. Get you over here a little bit. Get you somewhere where we ain't got so much glare. We'll come in at zero. And just rotate. That's our low points. Okay, zero. So not too bad. It's one and a half thousand there. Usually it's around two or three, so that's a, it's just showing good. Let's try to check it out here. This is probably two inches out. So it's not as bad as, uh, as you would think an old chuck like this would be. But I think we can get it closer than that. I think we can get it within a thousandth or so if we grind it. But it's, uh, it's actually a fairly, uh, fa fairly accurate old chuck. The only problem is most of the stuff I put in, it's not very accurate. But uh, that's a job that we got coming up in the future that you can look forward to. I've done it before, and I was fairly successful, so we'll do it again. Let's get to our job at hand. Now 
we're going to bring in our three quarter inch parting tool. Get away, get rid of all that excess material. Get a built up edge on there. Make sure it's coming up good and square. The square is can. Uh, looks like I'm going to have to adjust that a bit. I'm just pushing it up there just so we get a good true cut. I just loosened it in the holder, pushed it up a hand until it felt square, and tightened it back down. That way I don't have to mess with any of the uh, other tool holders. They're all pretty much set. Okay, let's get some... going to have to get some coolant running for this. There's a lot of... a lot of going, a lot of heat here. Turn that on. And we're going to have to remove about 600,000. Starting where we need to. Maybe going a little fast. about that rough finish. We'll clean that up in a minute. We need to slow it down just a little. too bad. Not a bad, not really a bad finish considering what we're doing here. All right. Oh, 
does seem to make a difference. with a file a little bit. Get some of the machine lines out of it. Not a crucial uh, dimension. None of these are, to be honest. The only crucial dimension on this thing, really, is the hole for the tap. This will make it a lot nicer to use those tool holders. Actually, it will make it where we can use them because... Really, they're non-usable the way they are. I'm going to break this edge here. Slightly clean that up. Break this outside edge. Roll our file a little bit. A little radius. bad so far. Let's see if we can get a decent pattern on this with the neural. If you want to, I mean, I would go check my video, the big tap wrench, uh, the monster tap wrench build or repair video. In that, in the comments section, Phil from Phil's Projects, like I said in the beginning of this video, gives a really good uh, you know, explanation as far as knurling. Much better than I can do, because I am still learning. A little, uh, try a little of that anchor loop there. Slow this thing down. Make sure this is coming in square. Loosen it. Just like I did the other pick tool. Get it good and loose where I can feel it. I'll come in by hand and just try my best to Get it square. Every project I do, you know, I learn something. good. So I think that was a success. Pretty good. A little light over here. But we're getting it. All right. I'll take that. Can't redo it. So now a really cool part of this job that what I really wanted to show you 
I mean, this is real basic stuff. What we're doing here uh, is the Morse taper number two on the holder. Let me get you set up and explain to you what we're going to do with this guy. All right. Now, here is the... And there goes the jet key and the, the uh, jet pan. But here's the Morse taper number two holder with just a standard drill chuck. And now I don't have a lot of... I've got a chip in there or something. I don't have a lot of experience setting one of these up. But I'm going to indicate off the front here by moving the bed along with this indicator. Let me get my chuck key out of the uh, depths of the lathe. Pocket flashlight, always good. And it is totally consumed by the lathe and forever gone. All right, I have retrieved it. <laughs> oh, the joys. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I've got my mag base hooked to the chuck here. I'm going to bring the indicator in here and get it set up. And I'll get you where you can see the needle. In just a second, and I'm going to run this along the. Uh, I'm going to move the carriage back and forth and zero this until I get it straight. All right, guys, I skipped forward a little bit here, and I'm not going to bore you with me moving the carriage back and forth and showing you that indicator because it was already already pretty good. Now, originally, when we set this drill chuck up, we just took a coaxial indicator in the in the chuck of the lathe and rotated it by hand until we got basically a zero reading. We just took a uh, end mill and put in there, and uh, you know, being a drill chuck, it's not all that repeatable. But uh, we got the height set uh, on the tool post, and to line this guy up uh, in the Y axis, we're just going to line it up by eye with our existing hole, which was originally drilled when we were lined up correctly so you know it is a drill chuck it's not all that accurate but you can do good work with these you just got to be real careful so let's drill this hole we're gonna try some more of this uh, anchor lube I'm gonna put a whole lot on there and not only can you power drill with this, but you can also, and I'm just moving by hand, the carriage, um, you can also just peck drill with uh, your standard uh, carriage controls. So now I'm going to engage the power feed, and then we're power drilling. Feel like it gets loaded up on chips, just disengage the power feed, back it out, and come back in. It's so much nicer than simply depending on the drill chip or on the uh, tail stop. Pretty simple, uh, but uh, I can see this being a very useful tool. I think it's probably about as deep as we need to go. Now let's power tap this, but we're going to use the tail stop. Right, I'm just going to put my tap in my chuck here. I'm going to tighten it down pretty tight. Uh, but as tight as I would to drill a hole with a with a drill bit. I'm gonna leave my tail stock loose. We'll try a little bit more of this stuff here. You know, I can't say that it's you know 
amazing, but it seems to work pretty good. I mean, as good as uh, most things that I've tried so far. You know, and I, but I've only used it on limited stuff. They say it's really good for stainless, is what I read on the tube, so we'll have to try it on that one day. And just leave the tailstock loose, slide it up. Extend my quill out a little bit. And I want to leave some space here, so if this thing wants to pull my tailstock in, it can. My tailstock is not locked to the bed, and you can't see, but I've got the hand wheel back here, and I'm just going to feed it in by hand. I'm going to try to keep up by hand. I'm not going to try to let this tap pull this whole big tailstock. This is a massive chunk. So I'm going to try to just keep up by hand, just slow, not letting it pull or not pushing from me. You know, I'm not going to push it in and I'm not going to let it pull. I'm going to try to keep up with it. So, And I'm going to let it get to the very end because I need this hole tapped as deep as this tap will go. And then I'll just shut the lathe off and we'll go from there. So I'm just going to start it in by hand. Everything's unlocked. And I'm just uh, trying to keep up with it, not letting it pull. And if it gets stuck, it'll just spin that tap nine times out of ten. It'll just spin that tap in the chuck. And then when I get really close, just turn it off. can't reverse my spindle, so just have to back it out by hand. Pull, my, pull it back. Get you back just a little so I can operate. that and now all we do have to do is park this off and this will pretty much be done we'll come in and with our drill chuck and we'll uh, uh, deburr this hole and then we'll then we'll come in and part it off lightly chamfer this another good thing should have done this really after I got done drilling, but uh, if you get the picture, you know, definitely a, a handy addition to the shop. So now let me get you a better angle. We'll part this off, and then we're done with this uh, this one. step that I'll show you in a minute. 
we're going to run this shaper and clean off the bottoms of these tool holders. Uh, we need to dust about a hundred thousandths off of them. That'll bring them to the, that'll put them at a point where we can lower them below center in the lathe and make them to where they work proper. I'm going to bring you in close. I haven't run this lathe in, or this shaper in probably two weeks, so I'm wondering if I should get it flowers before I run it. But uh, <laughs> anyway, come in, I'll show you what we're going to do. I'll show you the tools we're going to use, and we'll get started. Here's our tool holders, and these are the ones I showed you earlier. And if I set them here, this is a pretty flat surface on top of this vise. And I set all my cutting edges up next to each other. They are basically all exactly the same height. Let me bring in. So I think that if we pull, we're basically right at center height. If I put these in a holder and and put them in the lathe, they're perfectly on center, basically but I want to be able to drop below center just a little. So I'm going to pull probably, I don't know, about a hundred thousandths, I guess, off the bottoms of these. We're just going to set them in the vise here and whittle away at them. I'll show you the tool we're going to use. That's just a piece of Vasco Supreme and just a round nose, almost no rake, uh, fairly... Uh, fairly blunt really um, just because we are going to need a strong tool for this in my opinion this is some really hard stuff I'm not exactly for sure uh, what kind of steel this is but I've done this before and they're tough so I'm gonna get this set up and I'll bring you back when we're ready to cut All right, we're gonna be cutting these long ways we're gonna run kind of slow I don't want to cook this cutter because this stuff is tough. Get in here and touch off. Seated. Just a little closer. Take it easy. Pull off ten thousand just to see how it acts. And twenty thousands per stroke. And we'll speed up as we go. Experiment a little. Oh yeah. chips are coming off real blue. If we run too fast, we would cook it, that cutter, I think, pretty quick. Probably wouldn't hurt to use some cutting fluid, too. Smoke the shop up. Yeah, I think we're just going to be just fine. 
and we'll have a good finish in the end. Just gonna have to nibble away a little bit. It's full 20. It's a 2020. carbide holders will burn up a piece of high speed steel on a milling machine quick. But on the Schaefer, you know, it has more time to cool so they the tool steel just holds up better on a Schaefer. total so far. Let's do our final cut, 10 thousandths depth and uh, 10 thousandths per stroke just to get us a good finish. Not that it matters, it's the bottom of the car by holding, but whatever. Edge is still good, but it's definitely starting to abrade it a little. All right, now we're going to slow it down a bit. We're going to, well, just we're going to reduce our step over and our depth of cut. Just a ten thousandths deep, ten thousandths per stroke.
let's take this one over the lathe, and check it and see if what we did made a difference. Do that finish. Only thing I'd get it better net probably is a surface grinder. Very good. Let's try it. Alright, look at that. Our new nut and our lowered tool holder. Let's do a little before and after, even though I didn't do a before on this one. Let's, uh, I showed you that all these insert tooling was the cutter height was the same. So I'm going to put this one in here and I'm going to lower it all the way down to where it rests on our base here. And I've already got a little, you know, I've turned this, faced it, and we got a little center nub there, and I'm going to bring you around here and show you the height of this, and then we'll compare this one and then the one we just done. All right, this is the uncut one. You can see our little nub there. That's our actual center of rotation. And this is all the way down, all the way to the bottom. That's as low as I can get it. So it's actually just a hair above center. So we really couldn't use them like that. And plus there, we had zero adjustment. Let's do the, put the one in that we uh, turned, or that we done on the shaper, all the way down. See now, we got some adjustment. We won't need to go any lower than uh, than what that, uh, you know, than a hundred thousandths what we took off. So there we go. That's what we were trying to achieve. Just the ability to lower this to a little. Sometimes you never know when you want to run a little low or a little high. But we only had the ability to run high with these uncut, so I'm glad we did it. Well, I think today's been fairly productive for me. Our old nuts and the new ones. These three are heat blued, and I'll show you in just a second how I did that. It's pretty, and for no other reason other than they look better, in my opinion. The knurling turned out great on all of them. I mean, good enough anyway. We finally figured that out, at least pretty close anyway. So that was. A big uh, step for me. Look at these chips that come off of the uh, shaper. Look how blue those are. And then tool holders are hard stuff. I don't know exactly what kind of steel they are, but uh, whatever they are, they're they're tough. So now we got four new insert holders we can use. We can accurately adjust our tool holders now with these new nuts, and these are metric. They're 1.5 by, uh, yeah, they're 10 by 1.5. So had to get a tap for that. Um, they look like 3 8 16. Had me stumped at first, but then I checked them, and uh, sure enough, uh, they're metric. So we've got some hardware on the way. Um, I'm going to do away with these square studs that stick up, like on these. All those do is bust your knuckles. We're going to go with some hex hardware, just some um, some little short hex, and we'll uh, lock them down with a uh, with an Allen key. I think that'll be uh, you know it'll look it'll be more attractive and it will be safer for me. Um, let me show you how I blew these up. It's real basic, but pretty neat to watch. Just, uh, start to get them hot. Propane torch. Moving on them. Kind of looking at it with a flame all over it. You want it to heat evenly. Focus your heat on most of your thicker parts first. And it'll start to change. It's already starting a little. It'll happen pretty fast. So you gotta keep the flame just back enough where you can control it. There we go, we're straw. And then we'll start turning blue. And the blue is, uh, you go from blue to black real quick, so. We're getting some blue. Focus on the heat down low. And that's 
that's it. I think that looks better than just plain steel. And then I just let them cool, and don't that look pretty neat? Looks better than than this, in my opinion. At least it looks a little more trick. Well, guys, I really appreciate you watching. We got quite a bit done. If you haven't, make sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking on my little guy up here and hit the bell for notifications. And as always, I'll see you next time.